Bye. One, two, three. It's a rare sighting. It happened. It's all three of the big dudes in the trenches on the Big Dudes in the Trenches podcast. It's a sight to behold. All right, guys. I gotta. No, I'm kidding. Yep, sounds about right. <laughs> Bye, Tug. We'll see you later. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for joining us. If you are live with us on Twitch, Big Dudes in the Trenches on there. That's the best way to see the show, of course. Uh, but if you're live with us on Twitch, you'll be getting four conference previews in this episode. If you're watching on other platforms after the fact, first of all, recommend the YouTube because you still get the lovely graphics. If you're listening on audio, that's totally fine. Thank you for listening anyway. But these will be individual episodes. So we have four conferences we're about to be going through. This particular episode is the Missouri Valley Football Conference preview for 2023. Very exciting stuff. I like it. I'm excited. How do y'all feel about the Missouri Valley Football Conference? Uh, should be FBS as a whole conference. <laughs> uh, that's that's a hot take for sure. <laughs> I think there are a couple teams who would disagree. <laughs> there are a couple teams that would struggle greatly, but... They yes. are by far the best conference at the FCS level. I know there's some debate about that. and Okay, fair enough. If you want to debate that, go for it. But I think it kind of speaks for itself when they continue to produce national champions and teams facing off in the national championship game. Even if nine times out of ten it is North Dakota State and South Dakota State, the conference is still competitive throughout the year. It just seems yeah. to be that at the national level, only two teams have really risen to the occasion for them of late. Yeah, I think – that nine times out of ten is pretty literal. I think it's nine out of twelve of the past national champions are national are North Dakota State University, um, and I, I, the ones that is, weren't North Dakota State or South Dakota State have gone up to the FBS level. James Madison, Sam Houston State. There right. you go. Yeah, right. Uh, I will say I do think it is a bit of an SEC Big Ten debate. With that, where a lot of people will say, yeah, you have the national champions coming out of the Missouri Valley, but top to bottom, the Big Sky might be the stronger conference. The CAA has a lot more teams who are up there. Maybe they don't win the national championship every year. There is an argument to be had. The bottom of the Missouri Valley is not very good, but we'll get there. <laughs> well, you know, as we're talking about this, I we'll just... Get there. I'm looking at the slide early, and I'm sorry. I got to ask, what is it with these Iowa teams and the only good thing on them being kickers and punters? That is quite the transition to jump to our preseason Missouri Valley Football Conference all-conference team. This is... Uh, I'll hit the right button eventually. There we go. Yeah, it's constructed like our All-America squads. We have an offense, a defense, and four special teamers because they're tried to make sometimes this, people I try to make this as realistic as possible. And yes, only 11 on offense, only 11 on defense, because I can't stand those all conference teams who try to give you like seven wide receivers. That is not like an actual team that would see the field together. So this is <laughs> as realistic as possible. Yep. Uh, but on offense, it should be noted, I basically have the South Dakota State Jackrabbits, defending national champions. Uh, they're returning, I think, 21 of 22 starters. It's close Jesus. to that if it's not that. But they do have a first-year head coach, so it will be a transition of sorts, even though he was a coordinator for the national I was going to say, team. at least it was a, a hire from within there. It has to be defending national champs. Yeah. Coach goes out on top after 19 uh, years with the program, basically yep. building it from nothing <laughs> to, <laughs> to retire a champion is pretty awesome. Uh, but yeah, a lot of jackrabbits on this slide. It, it, we were just talking about it. We, we expect to see a lot of jackrabbits on this slide. The, the biggest thing for me, actually, the more shocking thing is only having two North Dakota State guys. But I also think that's because their players are more of like the number two or number three guy at their position in the conference sitting behind South Dakota state. That did happen quite a bit. Yes. <laughs> uh, I will say too, though, it's 
On the offense, the gap is a bit more pronounced, and I think it's a lot to do with the style that they play. South Dakota State is as close to a pro-style offense as you're going to see yeah. in the FCS, I think, <laughs> as opposed to North Dakota State, who's basically an option team yep. and really doesn't throw the ball at all. But they say, is really it, successful with that. Is it fair to call them an option team or more power run? It is fair to call them a team who can't recruit quarterbacks most of the time. But Carson Wentz most and, accurate. and Trey Lance. Yeah, so the two seasons that they had. Like there, we said, combined, most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> were really something different, and that's why they won those years. Uh, but every other year, it's been because they can run the ball like, like nobody's business. They got a fullback drafted. So North Dakota State can run the ball pretty well. Thing is, so can South Dakota State with Isaiah Davis, honestly, one of the highest profile draft stock running backs <laughs> in, the, in all of college football. I was going to say, LA, I mean, it's nuts to think about it because South Dakota State really does do it all on offense. They run, they pass. You can't, they don't pigeonhole themselves, uh, which is huge. You need that flexibility, uh, especially at this level. Yeah, they rabbit hole themselves instead. God damn it. <laughs> we do have a newcomer to the conference. This is the first year for Murray State in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. DJ Jones did make the list here. Uh, and this isn't necessarily by position. It was really difficult even on athletic department's own websites to find who exactly plays center, who plays which guard. <laughs> they move around all the time. It's the FCS uh, that happens all the time. So this is like a ranking of the top five offensive linemen, top four defensive backs, even because the defensive backs move around too. So it's <laughs> a little bit looser with the terminology here. <laughs> all right, Doug, I, I, I do get to ask though, Ohio State fan playing Youngstown State in week one. Are you worried about how week your sec? Week two, okay. Are you worried about how your secondary is going to hold up against Bryce Oliver? No. Is is that? <laughs> no, what I'm worried about is week three against Western Kentucky. <laughs> uh, that's a legitimate concern of mine. But anyway. <laughs> we're not talking about them. Right, we're not talking about them. Uh, if there is a South Dakota State of the conference on defense... Like if you if you try to look for the team with the best players at the most positions on defense, it is a little bit of a toss up right now between Southern Illinois and North Dakota State. I went with some Salukis here, even over some Bison, um, but I do think the back end of that Salukis defense is probably the best in the conference, and the line, the defensive line is a toss-up around the league. So it should be, <laughs> weirdly enough, it, it, they the conference is built to defend South Dakota State more than they're built to defend North Dakota State this year, it feels like. Well, that's what happens 100%. When you're on top. The biggest yeah. problem for SIU is going to be that they did lose their defensive coordinator to Northwestern because, well, everybody yeah. knows what's going on there. Right. I, I am curious though. You you left out some uh, some offensive players. I probably would have highlighted for SIU, but we can talk about that a little bit more when we get into kind of the second half of our conference preview here. Well, just like North Dakota State guys, there we're talking about number two or number three in the conference. Only looking at one all conference team, it's a lot of jackrabbits. That's fair. Uh, but I think it is fair to go ahead and jump to our tier list for the Missouri Valley Football Conference. I don't know if this is entirely fair because it feels like we're going to put playoff contenders as like national champion contenders here, <laughs> as opposed to some other conferences where it's like <coughs> if you make the field of 24 that might end up being like five teams here. So <laughs> it's, it's going to be <laughs> difficult to build this list. Uh, I don't know. Symmetrically. <laughs> it but doesn't we, need to, it doesn't need to be though. Cause we talked about this, the, yeah. We're going to have a lot on both ends, like a reverse bell curve, because the top of the conference yeah. is really good. The bottom of the conference is better luck next year. 
But I guess let's go in the order that I have the logos here, which is in no particular order, honestly. Uh, Illinois State up first. I would call them probably not that bad. Like, I don't think they're – I don't know that they're going to be contending for any positioning in the conference even. But I I don't think they're one of the bottom feeders. No, I I, I agree with you there. I don't think they're – the, like you said, the bottom feeders, but I also don't see them really even being in the conversation for a playoff spot, which is where I would put somebody who I would consider a tough out is somebody that, hey, they might make the conversation, but just not going to miss it. So I agree, not that bad is probably where they sit this year. Easy enough. Uh, I think the next team is going to be pretty easy as well. Indiana State has had a bad run of football for the last ever 60, 70 years. Ever. <laughs> Rather unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> let's let's talk about Missouri State here. I do think the Bears are in an interesting position because if we looked at that all conference team, I didn't have any Missouri State players on that all conference squad. Yet I do think they are pretty good. They got off to a hot start last year, kind of fell apart down the stretch, but they're losing maybe their weakest link in Bobby Petrino. <laughs> Uh, because he's just a nut job of a coach. So maybe losing him actually helps Missouri State this year. <laughs> to, to me, that's one of those teams I think that is exactly what I had just described. They're going to scratch the conversation. I don't know if they're going to get in. I don't know if they're going to be really good, but I would be comfortable putting them at a tough out level uh, this year. I would agree with that. I I would I don't think they're going to creep into that really good category. I think they're probably at the bottom of this tough out category here. They've got the base there. It's not like Indiana State where basically all hope is lost for the foreseeable future. <laughs> uh they they've got potential. We'll see what happens for them this year. Jumping to conference newcomer Murray State, the only team in the conference out of the great state of Kentucky. Uh, the racers are racing their way to a probably like a three and seven record. So let's go. <laughs> I, was, I was gonna say, I feel like I've seen them climbing. I might be mixing them up with Mercer. That's definitely probably happening. Well, also, but, they had one basketball player that made them recognizable. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> so, but and now for the wrong reasons, right? But <laughs> that's why I didn't want to. Divulge, <laughs> but yeah, Murray State is it's they're a borderline team for me because I do think it can well, be argued they they could be in the not that bad tier, like at the bottom of it. But also, I really don't expect them to win that many games. It's probably more accurate to say, "Better luck next year." So yeah, so ben, I look at I look at where they struggled last year with some of these games. I mean, you should not lose if you're a good team. You should not be losing to Eastern Illinois. I'm sorry. Yeah, at home of all of all places as well. So it. Ugh, what's their schedule? Look, what's their schedule look like this year? Because my concern for them is, like you said, they're that middling program right now. But really, where my concern comes in is you're going into a new conference that has better talent on the top end. You're going to be playing those teams. So how does their how does their say, schedule look? Uh, well, their first three games are their 1,000th game celebration at home against Presbyterian. Then they go on the road to Louisville and Murfreesboro to play Middle Tennessee State in week three. Then they get uh, Indiana State at home, South Dakota at South Dakota, SIU at home, Missouri State in Springfield, South North Dakota oh, State in Fargo, North Dakota at home, ah. Illinois State in Normal, you, and then finishing geez. the year out with South you, State. You sold me. Better luck <laughs> next year. <laughs> yeah. They, they did not get an easy draw either in non-conference or in conference play. It's uh, going to be another rough one for the, for the racers. But- <laughs> I, I would I would say that's probably valid. So wait, wait, We're wait. Look- so are these rankings twofold? Are they like top to bottom and then left to right? Yeah. Why not? Okay. Okay. Why not? Uh next up is North Dakota. Not North Dakota State, North Dakota regular. Um uh, 
<laughs> they are on the rise for sure. Like, this is definitely a team that could teeter on really good for me. I trust this defense a surprising amount. Probably more fair to call them a tough out right now, but they're definitely on the rise So, in my estimation. Based on their last few years, and I, at the FBS level, I hate doing that because you never return the same team, but like the FCS, generally speaking, you have the same team year in and year out, maybe a couple losses. Based on the rise that we've been seeing, <laughs> that defense at the FCS level is enough to carry them into the playoffs. And I think this might be the year that they make it. So I'd be okay mm. dropping them into that really good category. I think I would agree because they have been building a lot of momentum in the past, like you said, three, four years here. They've got a rather favorable schedule. If they can steal one of those games, either against South Dakota State or North Dakota State, they're going to put themselves in an excellent position. Now, saying that, they do play South Dakota State in South Dakota, and they play UNI in Cedar Falls. So those those are probably going to be their two biggest uh, biggest hurdles there. North Dakota State is a pretty good rival for them as far as football goes. I'm going to call that one a wash, even though they have it at home. So we'll see what happens there. I'm very interested to see what they're going to be able to do. Definitely. Yeah, I can agree with really good. Like I said, they're kind of on the edge for me. Maybe maybe towards the end of really good yeah. at the end of this. But they deserve to be up there. Some recognition for what they've done recently. Um, I don't want to spend a whole ton of time on North Dakota State because I think everybody knows where they're going to go. Yeah, they're, they're playoff contenders. Uh, even without... <laughs> A quarterback this year, basically, because they don't need one. They run the ball. <laughs> because who cares? They're gonna have three players over a thousand yards on the ground, probably. <laughs> North Dakota State reminds me of like Georgia in the sense that you never know who Georgia's quarterback is gonna be. Like you could hear the name and no one's gonna know it, but they're still gonna be in that conversation at the top of the nation every year. Confirmed. Stetson Bennett is now a bison. <laughs> at 72 years old. Just a couple years younger than Brady White. <laughs> Brady White is back for his 97th <laughs> year in college. <laughs> All right, on to the Northern <laughs> Iowa Panthers here. Uh, UNI always feels like a really strong team, but they always somehow end up like 6-6. Six and six. I do feel like it's fair at this point to just call them a tough out and leave it there. But also, I don't know if that's entirely fair because they always put up a fight to the point where one or two things go their way. They could be a playoff contender here too. But the problem Aside, is those things never go their way. <laughs> it feels that way the past we couple already years. Mentioned, yeah, and we already mentioned the North Dakota game that's going to be a big game for north dakota but what's going to be an even bigger game for you and i is senior night finishing the season out against north dakota state at the uni dome in cedar falls they've got a very favorable back half of the schedule once they get past uh south dakota state again that north dakota game is going to be a pivotal game for both teams it looks like because then they finish out the season with illinois state western illinois missouri state and then finally north dakota state if they can scrape together a couple of wins on the front half of that schedule, that does include Indiana State, they, they're they going to be in that really good conversation. But the issue is, I don't know if they're going to be able to do that, playing Iowa right. State and Weber, Weber State to open the season. Yeah. I, I'll i meet you guys in the middle because, Doug, I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I would put them ahead of North Dakota, but I would put them in that really good category because of the the ceiling, but also the volatility of their play. Yeah, I can see them in really good. I don't. I honestly don't know if they should go ahead of North Dakota. All right, fair enough. I think behind I North put Dakota, in, in North really Dakota good either. is fair. Can, can, can we put them on each other because they're kind of in that same category? No. <laughs> now, the, now the fighting Hawks get to stay ahead for now. Oh, we'll God, don't get me started on that because that still makes me mad. You're not even okay. a fan of theirs. I know, but still. Okay. Um, the South Dakota Coyotes are up here. 
I got to say, this is a team that's going to surprise a lot of people this year if you haven't been paying attention because South Dakota has been building pretty well. I got to say, I think they have the second best quarterback in this conference right now. I think they have the third best defense maybe in this conference. That's probably fair. And their linebacking core is kind of scary. Just Stephen Hillis by himself makes that a very scary unit. Uh, I think South Dakota has a shot to compete for the playoffs. I don't think they get there, honestly. Uh, but I think there is a there is an outside possibility. If they, they pull off some upsets, they'll be up there. I think it's fair to call them the top of really good right now. And, and I'm with you because out here in South Dakota, you can actually, again, not at the level of Ohio State and stuff like that, but you've seen the hype rise for them over the past, even I have in just the two years I've lived here, uh, the team has built really well. And these two normal schools, as we call them, not the state schools have been building to compete with their in-state rivals. And it's been working really well for both of them. So yeah, they're going to be up in that really good category for me. Yeah, they had, they were definitely in that tough out category last year. They had a lot of games that came down to the wire that they were in from, from whistle to whistle. And this year, I think they're going to take that next step. <clears throat> Le- hey, just, yep. <laughs> <laughs> so the <laughs> uh, That was us putting the Jackrabbits at the very top of everything for everyone listening on audio. <laughs> they they uh, will but, not move. <laughs> now it's time for Southern Illinois. And the Salukis are in an interesting position just because I don't know – how the defense is going to work with a coordinator change. And I haven't been able to trust the offense consistently over really the past couple of seasons. They are returning a bunch of pieces. It's a veteran squad at this point. And I do like what the head coach has done there. Uh, I believe his last name is Hill. Nick Hill. Does that sound? Nick Hill. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whew. It's, it's I was Nick like, Hill. I was <laughs> like 80% on that. And I was, I couldn't commit. Yeah, what Nick Hill has done there has been impressive. Like, I do think it's a – this is teetering on the edge of really good. But I can't trust them enough to call them a playoff contender right now. I would agree, and I I personally would put them in really good, though. Here's why. I talked about – I had a couple players I wanted to highlight that we weren't going to get to in the uh, all-conference team on the offensive side of the ball. And it's six-year seniors, Dante Cox at wide receiver and quarterback Nick Baker. They've got a connection that goes back all the way to high school, and they were electric yeah. two seasons ago. I don't know what happened last year that it all kind of fell apart. I think everybody that they had big games against that could get their shot at them was able to do it last season, and they weren't able to close out games the way that they should. That's really been the biggest issue for them looking back to last season and even creeping back a little bit into 2021. If they go out ready to play a full 60 minutes of football, they will be really good potentially in that playoff, uh, getting into a playoff spot by the end of the year. If they don't, they're just going to fall into that tough out category. They are smack dab in the middle of that really good category, if you ask me. So I'm trying to think around this, right? Because that quarterback wide receiver combo, Ben, are they juniors or seniors this year? Six year seniors. Seniors. Okay. So they the the issue shouldn't be them with the inconsistency they've they have been having, right? That was the issue with the Salukis last year. I do like right. what they're bringing to the table. Um, my concern there, Doug, you're just saying they have a really good coach, but if you're working with a fifth year quarterback and a fifth year wide receiver that know each other for at this point almost 10 years, they've been playing together at least. That points them to the head coach for me. That being said, I'm not willing to knock it. I'm not willing to knock them that hard. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's throw them up in the really good, uh, probably behind you and I for me. Um, And just we'll see where the season lets them settle out. They're either ahead or behind you and I, depending on your interpretation. I'm going to put them ahead of you and I, I think. All right. I think that's where, that's where Bug was pushing for them. So. <laughs> uh, 
Western Illinois. This is their last year in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. And uh, better luck in your new conference. I'm not going to lie. What conference are they going to? I don't remember. And not I, the Missouri Valley <laughs> copy. It, it's the, it's the uh, technically it's the OVC. Okay. But the Big South and OVC are combined now. So I don't know if, if I should say that they're going to the OVC or if they're going to the Big South OVC challenge. And one of those sounds significantly stupider. So, so they're going to the Big South <laughs> OVC challenge. You said yeah. it, not me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Youngstown State is the one that's remaining here. And people have been putting them anywhere from the back end of that playoff contenders tier to the top end of the tough outs. Um, I, I, I like a couple of the pieces that they have. And I do think this is going to be a very strong running team. But I can't, I'll, I'll tell I can't you where in I'm good sitting. faith put them in the playoff contenders tier. I, I agree. I'm, I'm going to tell you where I'm sitting. Again, this is another team that comes out and you see flashes from game to game, but you don't see that consistency. And that consistency is going to kill them. Right. Um, or that inconsistency, I should say, is going to kill them. Uh, I'm leaning, putting them, even when I first saw them, I was leaning on putting them in the tough out category just because of that volatility. Um, and that's that's just where I'm leaning. I, I would leave them in the tough outs. Yeah, there's a reasonable argument to be had that they should just go in front of, Mon of, of a Missouri State there. Yeah. I think that's probably where you got to put it because I don't look at their schedule – well, we'll we'll ignore their playing Ohio State. Everything else is all FCS opponents, and I don't look at any of these and think, "Oh yeah, that's definitely a win for them." They don't get right. any. They don't get. They get Murray State and Indiana State near near the end of the year. I'm like, okay, those are probably good wins for you. But you got to go to U and I. You got to. You got Missouri State at home. Fortunately, you got South Dakota State at home. But how much of a difference is that going to make for you in all reality? Uh, if they could pull that off on senior night, that'd be a huge statement game for them. But for now, I, I'm not I'm not a believer in the Penguins yet. All right. We're in agreement then. This is our tier list of the Missouri Valley Football Conference. And that will do it for our conference preview of that Missouri Valley Football Conference. Uh, honestly, <laughs> if you're live, stay with us. If you're listening on audio, check the links in the description. And we'll be right back with you in a couple of minutes, probably. <laughs> no, Even I think not I think live. Tug no. needs to read them. No, four times at least, at least once. I will at the end, guys. I love you both. <laughs> I just asked you to not do this four times in this show. No, no, we're I we're doing it four times because I don't feel like editing it. Go go ahead. <laughs> Go, go. Well, <laughs> thank you guys very much for checking out the Missouri Valley Football Conference preview. Uh, Tug's being a hard ass, so that's all you get. Yeah. <laughs> See you guys later.